please welcome in studio Julia Hart. Hi, Julia. Hi. Come on in. Welcome. Thank you so much. Have a seat. Thank have a seat. You. Thank so you. So great thank to have you, you here. So lovely to be here. I got to tell you, like everyone else, I'm so struck at the contrast between <laughs> the wedding photo and the person that just walked out. I mean, yeah. do, when you look at some of that old video, is it still very surreal for you? It. I try to think of happy things, but honestly, I look at those pictures and I, and it it makes me relive the pain and trauma that I went through. Do you see yourself or do you see someone else? Wow, I love that. I mean, I see myself and I just want to shake her and say, speak up. Mm. Don't stay silent, you know? A big part of you no longer being silent was the divorce. And this show is about, you know, public divorces. Uh, well, they're private, and then they <laughs> turn public for different reasons. You were married at the time to your husband, and you walked away. You say your divorce took eight years. Well, eight years in the making? Yeah. My divorce was eight years in the making. I have an amazing relationship with my ex-husband. He actually has left the community and moved to a more modern Orthodox community. Um, you know, and in my world, the way that it works is that a man is allowed to divorce a woman for any reason, but a woman is not allowed to divorce a man without his permission. Without his permission. Yes. She has to go to her husband and ask permission. And if he doesn't grant it, either she has to stay married to this man or she becomes something called an aguna, which means that she can never remarry because you can't have two husbands and you can't get divorced without your husband's permission, so you are stuck alone for the rest of your life. Who oversees that process? And who does anyone put the interest of the wife ahead of the husband? Well, I mean, those are the laws, and that's, that's what, you know, I wanted so badly to separate those two pieces because there are beautiful things in religion and beautiful things in Judaism. And you learn about charity and kindness and gratitude, living for something outside yourself. It's the laws that in the outside world have changed. I mean, let's be honest, go back 100, 200 years, women in the outside world were treated the same well, way. Well, you don't even have to go that far you back. I yeah. mean, honestly, it's actually been only 50 years since women could have their own bank account, just since the 70s. It's not 100 years ago, no. for sure. Exactly, and if you, so you think about that, and you think that in those times, people thought that was normal. Well, clearly the show focuses on this particular faith journey for you, but to your point, this is something that exists even now in different societies, we exactly. certainly know that. But the divorce for you, and I find it compelling because you are still friends with your ex. People assume that you are yeah. fleeing the marriage because right. it is bad, but for you, you were fleeing the faith. That's exactly correct. Meaning my marriage was an unhappy one, not because my ex-husband or I did anything wrong or either of us had were bad in any way, shape or form. It was the confines of that relationship, hmm. meaning his role was to police me, to govern me, to make sure that I was being a proper woman. And he followed those rules. And he rules, had to follow those rules. Which is interesting because, again, you have had your fair share of critics out there who say oh, yes. that you have portrayed the faith in such a negative way, that you've exaggerated it all right. for the sake of a reality right. show. What Thank do you say? You. Thank you for bringing that up because here's the thing. You can try and cloud the issue and confuse the issue by personal attacks, and I knew they would come. That's why it took me eight years to tell my story. That's why so few women leave. That's why so few women talk about their journey because they know that they will be personally attacked. But the reality is that the rules are inarguable. They're there. Here are the laws. The laws are that a woman cannot get a divorce without her husband's permission. He can divorce her for any reason whatsoever. That's the law. That's the rules there. If you're going to tell me that that is a fair rule, I don't yeah. know. The law there is that a woman is responsible to ensure that a man doesn't sin. 
So she has to cover her body. She has to make sure that anything above her elbow, below her collarbone, above her knee, above her ankle, all of that is covered. Which is not something that's exclusive to the ultra-Orthodox exactly. world. Julie, I obviously want to talk to you about children and, and how you explain this to them. But going back to what you said, the rules of, of the religion where you have to, or a woman has to, ask her husband for permission for divorce. What was that like for you? So, you know, it's interesting. I mean, it took us a long time to actually get that divorce. And um, it was, you know, because of our own and many other factors. But when I did the actual process, I found so comical, almost really? comical in the sense that I was in a room with a group of men uh, who, you know, they have to sign this religious divorce because a, a legal divorce doesn't mean anything. You need a get. You need that religious divorce. And they never looked at me to the point where I took out my phone and literally videoed them sitting there talking amongst themselves without them noticing. You were invisible. Because I was so invisible. So Those are facts, and they need to change. You went from this world where you were invisible to this incredible career, designing shoes, modeling agency, fashion world. As I said, you know, I, you walk in now, your awesome platform <laughs> shoes yes, on, indeed. your beautiful, oh, yes. you know, dress. Thank you. I think people wonder, I, I wonder, is this a rebellion, right? So you go from being invisible to saying, I am loud and proud. My skirt will be as short as I want it. My top will be as dipped as it needs to be. What is that? Is it a rebellion? I love this question. Actually, I look at it as my emblem of freedom. Hmm. To me, you know, my entire life, my body was something that had to be covered because if it was uncovered, if I was you know, particular or extraordinary in any way, a man would look at me and be like, oh my God, have terrible thoughts. And so that would be my fault, right? Mm -hmm. We were responsible for keeping men in line. Right. So to uncover my body says, it's my body. Right. I am not responsible for men's thoughts. Women's bodies are not responsible people, for men's thoughts. The people in your old world, your old life, if they were watching right now and saw you in this, what would what do you think would be the reaction? Well, I mean, I think you've seen the reaction. I am like the physical embodiment of brazenness, right? Which is what I titled my book. Yeah. Because I am not behind the scenes. Yeah. I am not silent. And here's the thing. I will not be silent mm -hmm. because the other reaction we've gotten from my community and honestly from communities all over the world are thousands of women, between myself and my daughters, thousands upon thousands of women saying, please don't stop. Don't stop. Please be mm. our voice because we're too afraid. Mm. I've had women literally tell me that they chose not to commit suicide wow. after watching the show. So I will keep on talking, I will keep on telling the truth, and you can attack me, you can, I had to change my phone number, I've had death threats, I will still wow. say my truth because women there need my voice. I have to ask you about your children, particularly how you explained um, some of it to your son. How have you managed that? Because ultimately, I can tell you as a mom, I really only care what my children think of me. Totally. Or my child <laughs> think of me. How do you process explaining the faith and, and trying to get them to understand what you in, encountered and in, in, in your feelings. You know, that the beauty, I think, of what we show on the show is that it's all about love. You don't have to agree with each other. You can have different opinions. We show such a vast array of different kinds of observances to show that religion is beautiful, Judaism is beautiful. It isn't about all of us thinking the same way. It's about having choice. Well, it's a fascinating world you live in right now, and Thank people are you. addicted to the show.